Grade 10 IEB IT 2.4 Computer Management This is your house if you don't look after it, don't tidy up, never sweep, never put anything away. And computers can also get to this sort of state if you don't look after them. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. When you first get your computer, it's got all the standard settings on which suit normal people, but you may want to customize them for yourself so that your computer works exactly the way you like it. You would want to set up the security so that it um, makes sure that your computer does not get attacked by viruses or get used by people who you don't want them to. And the best place to start is at the control panel. Through the control panel, you can pretty much do any, everything you want to do on your computer set, to set it up and maintain it. So to set up your account, which is your first task, you would want to put in your own username and password. In a network, the administrator does this and sets up all the user accounts for us. But with your own personal computer, you can put your own name and so on. Um, and in a network, users can be given access only to certain folders. For example, at school, there's a teacher's folder, which the learners are not allowed to access. And users can be restricted in what changes they're allowed to make to the settings. Um, so the administrator is the, the most powerful account in a network, and he or she can make any changes that he wants. And it's not a good idea to use this account all the time on your private computer because um, you may set up things that, you, that other people are not happy with. So to configure the desktop, you will right click on the desktop and then go and um, click on display settings. You can change the colors, the appearance of the mouse pointer, the theme, um, Windows gives you different themes, and also the screen resolution. Over here we see the pic in this, this computer is set to an, a resolution of 1366 by 768, which is the recommended resolution and we've kept it. Um, all these things are a matter of personal preference. And here is another picture of the control panel showing you all that is available to personalize your computer. Next, we go to security settings. So a firewall exists in your computer. It's usually software, but you also get hardware so firewalls. So um, regular traffic such as website information, which is shown with the green arrows, are accepted by the firewall and they're sent to the computer from the internet or from the server if you're working on a network. So good traffic is allowed, but a firewall's job is to stop unauthorized traffic, like an attack from a hacker. So the firewall has a way of recognizing when unauthorized traffic comes through and a way of stopping it. And the record will be made of the attack. So most process, um, programs accessing your computers are checking to see if there are newer versions of the software available. Um, and um, firewall software controls which programs can access the internet. So it's a wall between your computer and the internet. Um, if the firewall decides that this program should not be accessing the internet, it's maybe a virus or some malware that's been installed on your computer and it's accessing the internet to supply maybe personal details about you that your, you, the firewall knows should not be going out, it will stop it. It also tries to hide your computers from others out there. And um, Windows provides a basic firewall. You get better firewalls like Zone Alarm and Norton Internet Security. There's also other security um, software. We call it anti-malware uh, generally, but it's broken down into antiviruses, anti-spyware, and anti-adware. And a good anti-malware will cover all of these. Um, with ongoing maintenance, you need to look after your desktop. Um, on the right is a picture of somebody who believes in putting everything on the desktop. This can get very confusing. And when you need something, it becomes very difficult to find it. So file and folder management is very important. You should be refining and maintaining your folder structure on your computer. 
And don't use names like DOC1 or X1, because when you need them again, it will be very difficult to find. Rather rename them if you have called files like that. Also remember to delete the files that you do not need anymore because they just clutter up your space. And files that you hardly ever used and that are very large, you could compress and then save on disk space. Um, there is a facility in Windows. We call it a utility. Remember, it's system software and it's a utility because it's not exciting application software. It just does something useful for you. So disk cleanup removes all temporary files which were downloaded from the internet. That's stuff that goes on in the background while you're busy browsing certain websites. Deleted files and folders that are in the recycle bin. Temporary files created by Windows and components of Windows that you're not using and also installed programs that you no longer or seldom use. So it clears up a lot of space on your hard drive. Backing up is a very important um, aspect which very many people neglect. And why do we back up? Well, in case of theft, in case of your computer gets damaged, in case of accidents or deletion of files. And if you do back up regularly, you'll be very happy you did if something ever does happen to your computer. So backing up is just making duplicate copies of files onto a removable media. Remember when we say media, it means a, either an external hard drive, a CD or DVD, or a flash drive, or even an SD card. So remember to keep the backup separate, because if you say keep it in the same location as your computer, if your computer gets stolen, the backup will probably also get stolen. Um, Windows provides a backup option in the control panel, as the one shows and shown on the right, and you can set it up to backup regularly for you. Here are some backup tips. Keep copies of your original installation disks or operating system and application programs, although this is maybe becoming a bit outdated because a lot of our software comes from downloading of the internet. Um, perform general housekeeping activities to prevent wasting space, like the ones we've just spoken of. And you only need to back up the files which were modified since your last backup. If you're backing up through Windows, it will take care of this. And rather don't actually use flash disks, although I didn't mention them just now. The problem with flash disks is that they easily get lost. Updates on the Windows, you'll notice that regularly you need to update Windows. Sometimes Windows gets a very, very slow or you'll find certain features aren't working and that's because Windows wants you to restart your computer if you just every day hibernate it rather than switch it off completely. So why are updates important? They add new features that Windows or whichever software wants to add to your software. They also fix little bugs that may have been found and they deal with new threats like with antiviruses, anti-spyware and anti-adware software. So um, that's why it's really important to back up because there may be new viruses that have been developed and if you do back up, I mean if you do update, you will then um, protect your computer from those new viruses. So operating systems are not as crucial to update, but it's still important. And some updates fix loopholes in the operating system through which hackers can attack the computer. Remember when you add or remove hardware and soft software, especially, you must um, use the facility that is provided in Windows. Do not just delete software. So installing new software, you usually get it from the internet or a CD and DVD and it usually runs by itself or there is an installation with wizard. Please refer to the book for more steps. And uninstalling software, it's not good enough to just delete the folder where the program is located because there could be files belonging to the program that are found in many different folders that you don't know about. So use the uninstall program that you can find in the control panel when you want to remove software. Adding new hardware is something that we often do. You get a new printer, um, 
a new joystick or a device to, to, to use with your gaming. And most devices work with plug and play these days, which means plug and play is a feature on Windows where you can just plug the new peripheral in. Windows then finds it and sees it. It can detect that there's a new device there. And Windows configures it, meaning that it finds the driver for it and it finds out how to talk to it and it allocates memory space and um, it knows exactly what to do when you plug it in. So you don't have to do anything. A driver, remember we spoke about it in the last um, module, it is, it's software that enables your operating system to talk to the hardware device. And Windows has a huge database of drivers which are included with the Windows. But if this new device's driver cannot be found, then Windows will ask you to put the CD into the CD drive and try and find it. And if it's not, if you cannot, if you do not have a CD or can't find it, then it will suggest that it will look for the driver on the internet. Discs, um, hard disks, a problem with them is that they get fragmented. When we say fragmented, if you look on the picture on the right, you will see, for example, if you look at the green um, stripes or the green little blocks. Can you see that there are many green blocks all over the drive? This is how um, files are saved on your hard drive. They are saved in um, circles like this, concentric circles, because that's how the hard drive saves data. The problem is that as you delete and, rem and save new files, it always starts saving them in whatever space it can find from the beginning of the drive. And that's why your, drive, your, your files get scattered all over the place instead of being saved. We call it contiguously. Con a contiguous file is a file that has not been split up like the files in my picture on the right here. So um, fragmentation causes a lot of slowing down of the computer, you can imagine, because your files, whenever you want a file, it has to look for it all over the place on the hard drive and so every now and then you need to reorganize your files so that they are not fragmented anymore and Windows does include a disk defragmenter you can use it to check whether your disk is fragmented or not before you decide to defragment and remember to use to, to only set the defragmentation to operate at night when you do not need it because it takes a long time Archiving is the last thing we'll talk about. Um, it's not the same as backing up. It's when you store files that, um, that you do not need anymore onto secondary storage. Um, it's a manual process. You, you cannot set it up to work to operate it, um, op automatically like with backing up. And files are moved right off the system to make space on your hard drive.